Well, hello everyone, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, hi everyone. Um, basically, I'm looking back on my painting trip to Cornwall again uh, this afternoon, working in the studio. Um, but today, I'm actually going to look back on a watercolour that I produced down there and demonstrate really how I would treat that uh, as a quick sketch uh, using acrylic paints. So Sheep in the fields. Lovely. which is basically the mixing palette. I've got one or two older paints that at the end of the day, if there's some left, I put them in to um, little jars, which is always useful. Uh, and I've got a tray or a, um, one of these boxes that hold water and you can clean your brush and lay the brush on the side in the water to actually keep, um, uh, to keep moist, because obviously with acrylics, if they go dry, then they ruin the brush. I've got a, a fairly wide um, flat, I've got a round, a couple of rounds, a small, medium and a, a rigger in the background. It's got a knife for scraping off if I need it and I'm raring to go. Well I do have the aid of a photograph that I actually took but if you remember I did a quick pencil sketch, it's a graphite pencil sketch of the scene um, just laying out a few sheep in the foreground, got the trees, the valley. Uh, this is looking across the Camel Valley that eventually goes into the sea between rock and padstow. And um, foreground, obviously, we've got the, the field with the sheep. We've got trees that gradually taper down into the valley. And then we've got more fields coming up the valley the other side and looking across, um, well, really out to the coast, um, ultimately. Um, but not on this painting, of course. Um, so let's get started. Well, I'm working on um, uh, acrylic paper, basically. So there's nothing uh, particular fancy about that. Um, I can try and show you the mixes occasionally, if I can remember. Okay, the first thing, we're, I've not done any drawing, but I'm gonna establish the, the edge of the field where the two large trees are. So I just take white, with a touch of yellow, I've moistened the brush. There we go. Touch with a with, with a touch of white, a little bit of that yellow, and I'm just going to gently stroke it across there with you know some sort of conviction really, because that's the key to uh, painting. Now I'm adding a little blue with the yellow because I want to get some green in there. Uh, touch more yellow going in there. And I want that to be light in the distance. And uh, and I'm just, notice the way I'm painting the way the actual, um, um, the actual uh, grass actually uh, flows really, you know. It's on that slope like that. And I'm not worried if the white paper still shows through uh, at a later date, I can get rid of that. A bit more white there, just to um, freshen that up, a bit more yellow in there. And I need a little bit of brown. So I'm adding a bit of white with that brown and just perhaps a little touch of, there we go, that's lovely. Because there will be areas of what I'd call burnt sienna that really um, enhance this uh, painting. Now I'm being much darker so I'm using more blue and more of the yellow just in that bottom foreground there. And that is all I'm going to do for that start of this lovely scene. Now the sky. Okay. Let's have a look at the sky. Um, 
There is some cloud, but basically it's quite blue. So I'm just going to use Prussian blue. Um, may even use the white of the paper in places just to um, enhance that sky. It's going to be very like this sunlight coming from the left here today. Um, so that's the way I'm treating this. Um, you know, I'm treating this as if I was out in in the fields, really, just sketching. Uh, and I think sometimes that's not a bad way to um, to treat your um, uh, your paintings, you know, because you you can get sort of bogged down with detail, and that really doesn't doesn't really enhance the overall feeling of of of, of a sky and. And, and the feeling of um, of um, of uh, the landscape, really. You know, I'm trying to imagine the sort of landscape that it was on that day, and um, well, that's pretty much what I saw. Now we're going to have a bit of blue and a bit of the brown. So I'm using Prussian blue with a little bit of the brown because. And then a little bit of the vermilion because a bit more blue because I want to put some clouds in and that is the start of my clouds not too much cloud work over there notice how I'm using the, the side of the brush to blend the lower part of the cloud and just rubbing at the paper There we are. Perfect, perfect introduction to this scene. And then out of picture, that cloud is going to get sort of lost out there, like that. And there again, stir it in. That's the cloud I saw on the day. So that's the cloud I'm putting in at this time bit more of the blue there, a bit more of the red too with that blue, just to give it warmth. There we are. A bit more of that darker stuff just coming in there. There we go. Could always enhance that with some white later on. But that basically is the feeling of that distant sky. Okay, now I've used Prussian blue with a little bit of white, touch of red, to actually produce the distance. There's sort of like a distant hill there that runs like that. Pretty much runs out of picture, really, I think, and runs up towards where those trees will be. So there you go. That's your distant land. Um, not too difficult that. Now I'm going to clean the brush. The brush is nicely clean. Um, now I'm going to use that to produce the foreground, well sorry, the middle distant field. And that will take a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of the blue, but it is quite yellow, but it is quite light. And that sort of swoops like that, um, more or less up in to that valley there into that sort of area and that just follows that line where those trees will be there we are isn't this painting business fantastic and that goes up to there a little bit not sure how that will work out um, good now I'm going to put the trees in I love painting these these scenes in acrylic. Um, a nice bit of atmosphere I think I've got on that one. Now the first tree that goes in will be this one that stands there. Um, I've mixed up a little bit of uh, cadmium lemon, a little bit of Prussian, a little bit of white and now you've got to pick up the shape of these trees. Now to do that Sometimes I twist the brush 
uh, it really is a matter of technique that you pick up over the years really of shaping and loading the brush um, but um, yeah let's not go too high at this stage because we can always go higher but I don't want to interfere if I can with that lovely uh, sky that I've got in the background there so that's that one gone in and I'm going a little bit more yellow and a bit more white just for the sunlit side there just to lighten that sunlit side up like that there we are now the other tree is going to have a little bit of brown in there a bit of the the that lovely burnt sienna because that's what I'm looking for it's like a nice brown color because this one is going to be darker but let's put the light area in first make it all light to start with and that one is slightly smaller than that and I'm painting around that it doesn't have to, I don't have to but um, it's something that um, I recommend whether you're acrylic or whether you're watercolor really um, and that heads off down to that lower part there so I've just established the two trees now I'm going to use a little bit more yellow into that because I want to establish the hedging that runs along there so that is that hedging runs along there like that and we just put a little bit of dark blue and a little bit of dark brown with so we get a, a, a nice earthy sort of color because behind that I can actually see some hedging so that's and I'm going to put something in a little bit higher there don't think it's actually there but I think it's worth putting in there we go um, then as we work our way down the valley this is the sort of color that I'm looking for quite dark again there um, I'm just looking at the sketch and got my eye on the photograph but it's not a major um, player at the moment a um, bit more yellow going in that now just to enhance that ring the changes try and get the feeling of trees as we head off down into the valley that's good now a bit more white a bit more yellow a uh, bit more yellow a bit more white there you go a bit more white a bit more yellow because I want to pick up some lighter trees there lighter on that side there and there and some more earthy areas so a bit more brown a bit more the burnt sienna going in there a bit more yellow a bit more blue and finally that goes down into the valley like that there we go perfect now I'm going to put the sheep in so all I'm going to do I'm going to use the white there like that just a touch of the yellow very little and where am I going to have these sheep right we're going to have one there like that we're going to have one there that's facing away like that we're going to have another one there which is also facing away and um, this one is facing in and what, how they face can be quite important to the final sort of outcome really as to what you're trying to achieve a couple of others there smaller as they go away there you go now the undersize just before it dries I'm going to introduce a bit of the burnt sienna now because I always think the undersides are quite brown 
uh, on shape. So this is what um, I'm going to do. There we are, a bit of brown, a bit more in that. A bit more in that. Touch there, touch there. There we go. Perfect. Good. So that's um, the start of the shape. Now I'm going to really enhance the darker colours. I'm going to pull in a little closer so that you can see a little better. I hope that we can see a little better like that as I start to do the finer detail of this uh, uh, lovely little view across the Camel Valley. And the final details uh, come in the form of, of shadows. And let me do this tree first. Right, so you mix up a dark brown blue and you just stipple. I just like the idea of just stippling the outside edges of this tree, leaving some of the underpainting as it comes through to the lighter area. But not on the underside, obviously, because that's where the shadow is. And another place for shadow, I'm flattening the brush now, is along the base there of that hedge. There we go. And of course, the right hand side, and that one completely, and put that up as a larger tree. There, there we are. Perfect. Just a little bit more on the underside of that. Good. Now we add more brown to that to do the darker side of this tree that should highlight the lighter side of that other tree that stands there. So, and this is, it, it, is, it is heading towards autumn. So um, these trees did have an autumn tint to them. So I'm happy to do that. Uh, because that's the way they actually were, actually, uh, on the day. Really enjoyed my trip to uh, Cornwall, visiting the varying sort of uh, places as you do there. Good, so that's the two um, main trees in. Uh, and then, a bit more blue now, because we have darker shading there on the underside where those trees stand in to the hedging which they do we just pull down just create varying different shapes within that leaving that area light at this stage and i'm putting a dark area in there with a splash of more stronger darks there we are mainly along the edge of the field really good that pretty much does it now I picked up some really light yellow because I want to just show off where that field meets the, the grass like that and just blend it a little bit that's it there we are that just sits the whole thing down let's just add a little bit more color no more water because I want that to really light up along that field there almost white let's put a little bit of white in there there you go look at that now add a bit of yellow to that and pull that in there we are and that's the way you create these lovely flowing fields there we go yeah i think that pretty much sums up uh, as it was on the day 
Now there's not too much more to do to this one, but I do want to introduce some um, foreground um, greens to give the feeling of a real foreground shadow. So that's going in there like that. And that will, all I'm doing is picking up a bit of yellow and a bit of blue, really. That's all that's required for this. Really dark in that foreground, like that. And it's going to have a sweep of dark, runs up to the sheep, like that. But it gradually gets lost again. Blend that through. Right, this same colour, just putting a bit of red in that now. See the way I've really drawn that sunlight into that area by putting that red in. Now, there's also going to be a streak of it there. And to a lesser extent, so I'm losing some of the paint on my brush on kitchen towel and just sweeping that in like that. Just watch I don't remove this, the, the sheep from this area. There you go. That's it. And just have that slope. It's got to have that slope down. Good. And there's also going to be a touch there. Because I want the eye to be drawn towards that distance. And if you have too much in the way of, um, that's better, that's good. Now under those foreground sheep, it's going to be just a splash of green, yellowy green, like that. Before I finally put the touches in, a bit of white here and there. There you go, look at that. Just really go at it. That's it. Look at that. And then get a bit of yellow and a bit of white. Just pull that up like that. Give it a bit of a mystical feel. Just like that, really. Good. It gives it a lovely rough grass feel. That um, it's the only way to get that. I think, smooth it away, create a lovely smooth area there. Now I'm going to put the sheep in. Now the sheep had dark heads, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mix the brown with the blue. It'll give me a bit of green, so I'll use the red instead. There we go. Um, so they're almost black heads really. And we're going to put one head in here. Now I'm going to use my mule stick for that. Just to steady my hand really. Um, and we've got the head down there like that. That head is looking that way. This head is looking down there. That one is looking there, it's a little dot of head there and a little dot of head there. There we are. Now the legs take some moisture off of the brush and the legs are purely lovely little spindly legs these, um, these sheep have got. And they're also sort of dog legs at the back. Like that couple of legs there, there, like that, a little bit there, a little bit there like that. Look at that. Before you know it, you've got the start of sheep. Now I'm just going to shape their backs up with the, um, with white, so that we get the right sort of shape in there like that, nice bit of white there, bit of white there, just pull that around in the shape that we want, a nice bit of white there, 
and oh yes we've got to put some white in there and not quite certain which way they are that one's turned but let's put it like that I think that uh, sort of sorts the sheep out in their rightful positions Now I've just put in some little brown touches in this foreground um, there and there, burnt sienna, Prussian blue and just to finish I'm going to smooth off the background but apart from that the job is done and what I mean by smoothing off is just clean this large brush what I mean by smoothing off is taking blue and uh, yellow and white and just trying to get a clean wash of well it's not a wash clean effect of color sweeping across that area there because that has got to be I think more of a cleaner uh, feel in the distance and of course here a bit more yellow going into this there you go where those trees are but even so it does need to have a good clean feel so I'm just cleaning up the initial colour that I laid on and that will help to pull the sheep forward uh, you know it, it gives it a bit of depth I think then just going to touch in with this color because I like that color I don't like it that much <laughs> too much on the brush so I'm sweeping that away and that wasn't the best thing to do so what you do you get another brush that's got very little paint on and you just spread it in there you go that's easily got rid of there you go a bit more blue just to make it a bit more rough in this foreground here because I want to try and get that feel of depth which um, you can probably hear I've got the brush in my mouth now so that means that we must be getting near to the end of this because once the brush goes in the mouth you begin to feel that you probably painting for no reason whatsoever and if that's the case then um, really time to, um, to sort of finish I think and I think we'll call that done and our cottage overlooks the lovely Camel Valley and this morning it's absolutely atmospheric just just the sort of morning that um, for an artist it's an absolute dream look at that look at the way the sun shines there isn't that fantastic and there is Snappers our cottage for the week and it overlooks the valley the atmosphere is absolutely terrific here. Sheep in the fields. Lovely location. One last thing, I will be putting birds in the sky. So um, instead of calling it completely done, let's just put in some birds in the sky. Now, the birds I did see, um, and that is going to be suggested rather than painted because 
we need them very small. Like that. Yeah. I think that just adds just a little of something to that distance. Good. Now I'm going to clean the brush and sign up. And then I shall remove the outer surround and we'll see what we've got. And I'm going to sign in the same colour or the same mixes that I've used. But I'm actually going to sign in a light colour against a, a, a dark background. I think I can use this, uh, this brush. Let's just weaken that off with more water. Because vital that we get a, a fairly good clean signature. I don't want it to be too too rough and that's going in here and that is my sort of signature for this sort of work there you go all I'm going to do now is take the surround away. I love painting these these scenes in acrylic. Um, nice bit of atmosphere I think I've got on that one. Well there you have it. Um, the finished painting. Um, it's really a sketch. You know, just as if I was out in the field trying to capture the feeling of the day um, using acrylic. And um, well, a nice bit of depth to that. Um, there could be more detail in the distance, but it's all about getting the atmosphere of the sky and the foreground uh, field, really. And, uh, well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching that. And if you have, please subscribe. Um, and in the meantime, uh, I'll be showing more of these um, in the future. Thank you for watching.